I'm gonna teach you how to outsmart brands, so listen up because the brands are not gonna like this one. I'm a cosmetic chemist. I'm going to teach you how to read ingredient lists so that you know exactly what you're paying for. So every ingredient that is at 1% or higher needs to be listed in chronological order. And everything under the 1% level does not need to be listed in chronological order at all. And this is where brands can hide how much of an active is actually in the formula. So here are the common ingredients to look for that are typically around or under the 1% level. Phenoxyethanol legally cannot be above the 1% level, so if you see this in an ingredient list, everything after it is automatically under the 1% level. Hypoglycol, sodium benzoate, and potassium sorbate also fall under the preservatives category and are typically used under the 1% level. Next up is plant extracts. They can be above the 1% level, but I would double check with the price of the product to see how much a company might actually be putting in there. Tocopherol and tocopherol acetate are usually in a formula to help with discoloration or oxidation and are typically used under the 1% level. Citric acid and sodium hydroxide are pH adjusters and typically are not above the 1% level. Disodium or tetrasodium EDTA are chelating agents and chelating agents are typically under the 1% level for a leave-on product. And unless it's Bath and Body Works, fragrances are usually under the 1% level, but this can depend on the brand for sure. Thickeners usually hover around the 1% line, but too much xanthan gum cellulose or carbomer can make a product really sticky. Okay, now let's practice. I'm going to be using good molecules as reference because they list all the percentages and they are very transparent. This priming moisturizer contains many emollients and emulsifiers, but here we have a carbomer, which I can safely assume is under the 1% line, and that's correct. Let's try something a little bit harder. This retinol product from the Inky List contains a lot more ingredients. I see capillo-glycol that can be at 1%, but I'm going to safely assume that everything around it or after it will be under the 1% level. This means that the retinol in this product is definitely under 1%. But don't forget guys, just because it's under 1% does not mean it's not effective. There are many actives and extracts that are tested under the 1% level and have shown efficacy in clinicals. However, now that you know this trick, you can go and outsmart brands and see exactly what you're paying for. Let me know if you have any questions.